sorry for that. Uh, my name is Winifred Suribe, and I'm currently finalizing my PhD at the University of Bedfordshire in Luton, and my research is focusing on entrepreneurial finance, so mostly how early stage entrepreneurs raise finance. So um, Dr. Mikkel has been able to sort of walk you through how much do you need to start your business. And so what I'm going to be doing is just walking you through the types of finance available uh, to you as you start up your business. Now, um, I'm really an accountant by training. So we're, we're approaching this more of an accounting and then the finance side. Uh, as we start... Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to just keep it really close. You have to keep it close to you. Too. Okay. Um, so the previous, uh, the previous presentation to this, Jana talked about dynamic equity. And so she talked about how when we're starting a business, dynamic equity is a better way to allocate the equity rather than, so let's say you start a business, there's four of you, your guys are all like time 10, you decide to, I don't know, split the equity 25%, yeah? As you go down the line, maybe six months, you know, one person is not doing as much as they promised that they would. What do you do then? Or if one person decides to leave along the line, how do you, what, what do you do? So one of the new models that we've been looking at now is what we call dynamic equity, which is what Jana has talked about very quickly. Or well, I'll just, uh, just describe how it works. So what we usually uh, do on the dynamic equity is to say, how much time, how, how, how do we value your time? So let's say we have, this is a digital marketing agency startup. So you have Tim that is a very experienced, um, you know, maybe very experienced in digital marketing. And you have John who has just started, he's fresh out of college and he's just started the business. Now, we say that, for example, value Tim's time at $200 per hour and will value John's time at $100 per hour based on their experiences. Now, we'll say that, let's say if Tim is going to give us 100 hours throughout a year, and John is going to give us 100 hours throughout a year, and we say, so based on that, we say, uh, Tim is going to be able to give us 20 pounds, so that's how much we're supposed to pay him. Well, we're just starting off our business, we don't have that much money to pay, so we allocate it based on equity. And then let's say, for example, Tim is able to give us some cash, some money. So he's able to contribute $5,000 to business. Now, we always, using this model, we value cash at times four. So if he's giving us $5,000, we value that at $20,000. Now, adding the two off, we see that Tim is able to, has given us 40 grand and John has given no cash, so we say he's given us 10,000 only. And so when you allocate that, we give Tim 80% and we give John 20%. So this is a very rough example of how you can use dynamic equity to sort of allocate equity very early on in the business when you don't have the money to pay your staff. Now, so some of the drawbacks of this is when you have very complex projects, especially those, let's say, in the pharmaceuticals by science, it's very difficult to monitor the time log. So there might be some issues there. That's one of the drawbacks here. It might also, it does take time. It does take time to keep track of the time. But I think, you know, because of how difficult fixed equity can be and some of the problems, it's what the time, you know, to do this. Now, we also find out that it's much more successful when you have a honest leader, someone that is willing to actually, you know, um, accept when some people are doing much more work than he is. So that's one thing uh, to take into consideration. Now, as you start the business, so we've said when you decide to start, so Simon has already talked about idea validation. And as you validate the idea, you know the business is going to work, you have the data to support that. The next thing we're focused on is funding the seed stage. So seed stage is when you're trying to get the business off the ground. Now, getting loans at this stage will be very, very tricky, and we'll talk about that in a very, in a, in a short a minute. Uh, one of the other things that you might be willing to do here is you might think about royalties, you might consider joining incubators or accelerators. This might be ways of 
uh, funding your seed stage. So that's one thing that you can uh, do at this point. You might look at business angels. So if you have you know, really well people that are willing to invest in the business, then that might be a good place to go to. Uh, you might join accelerators or incubators. So these are becoming very popular. You might look at the local council where you live or your universities or check online and see if there are any accelerators or incubators. They might not necessarily provide you finance, but they might direct you to places where you can find money for your business. Now, so now when we say why loans are not the easiest to get at this stage, it's because first of all, we don't have any collateral. Um, most, you know, most people that are starting the business just have us, you know, some cash. They don't have the assets that they can use to take out loans. So loans might not be the very the best things to go for at this stage. Uh, so you're thinking about very early on, you're trying to you know, go for a very lean kind of startup where you might buy secondhand used good, um, you know, uh, equipment if you need some. Uh, you go, so I remember we, I, I normally have this uh, fireside chat and I know this Kate Rock, who's really doing a very good business in Bedford. And one of the things she said when she started her catering business is, she really went to yard sales to get some of the uh, items she needed to run the business. So you don't, it, you know, as you start the business, it's a case of going as lean as possible, trying to keep the cost under control. You know, you're trying to use as much free stuff as you can. You're trying to uh, go for the cheaper, where you can leave or where you can buy a second hand, those are the best alternatives. Because um, like, Simon has said, several other people, the guarantee of the business opportunity is very thin. So you don't want to put too much money in uh, when, you know, and then you eventually fill. So you want to keep the cost under control as much as possible. Now, VCs and private equities might be a good option, especially, but one of the things is what they look for is they're looking for scalability, they're looking for innovation. Okay, and they, they want to know how viable it is. So they're going to give you all that money, but they want something different. So if you're going to approach a VC early on, you need to make sure that your idea is something that can attract a lot of users or subscribers. So things like that are based really on, you know, on technologies, what they really fun. So if you have like a conventional idea, a VC is not likely to be the person that would give you money because a VC is looking for 10x return. So they want to give you, I don't know, however much, and they want 10 times the money they're giving you back as a return. So if your business is not going to be able to generate that large a return, they're not really going to give you money. So that's one thing you need to um, be aware of. So that's it really. It's really just a very quick rundown of the options that are available to you um, as you start your business and you try to fund it. So that's my uh, LinkedIn profile if you want to connect and if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Winifred, thank you so much, everybody. Um, for those of you online, if you'd like to ask questions to Michael, and we'll field some questions for Winifred here in the audience here. You can listen to so any, any questions that Winifred's brought up about her slides that she's presented, or, or anything for Michael that, that you want us to put online. No? Okay, comments. Yeah, come on, of course. Um, the items that were mentioned for like raising capital, like if they talk about things like venture capitalists and crowdfunding on Apple, I was going to say, bearing in mind the times are changing like, like quite rapidly. Um, and a lot of people, like you get a lot of IT tech people, they talk about a lot of like digital, making money on the internet and so on and so forth, things like cryptocurrency. I was wondering why that hasn't been mentioned as an option as well, because if there are people that know how to make money on the internet and make money quite fast, because there are certain things and certain platforms where once someone knows what they're doing, if they're like an IT savvy person, could that not be another option 
as in that if you can make your money that way, you don't actually need to request loans from people. Like, why isn't that mentioned as another thing, as a new upcoming thing? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. All right, thank you for the question. So if I understand your question, so you're saying why is cryptocurrency not a form of external finance? Is that, is that what Yeah, that's like because so many of, especially the up, upcoming youngsters nowadays, they're very IT savvy. They know how to make money on, in cryptocurrency. They said since from 2009, I think cryptocurrency has increased by something like 9 billion since then and the bank of england thought that nothing would come of it but it has so people can make a lot of money is looking like in the cryptocurrency field so a lot of these like things that were there for as forms of making money before some of them could actually become redundant if people know who to talk to and where to go to you end up not really needing loans um that's a that's a tricky one but what i'll say is uh, from here we're looking at, okay, so, sorry. so what I'll say is from here we're looking at um, so the, when you think about cryptocurrency and you know being able to mine your own money, that's an entire thing on its own. Yes. Uh, with this, where we're really saying you're starting a business. Uh, as you start a business and you grow a business, it gets to a point where you have to stop putting in your personal finance or your personal money and start seeking external finance. And Cryptocurrency is not a form of external finance that you can seek per se. So that's why it's not relevant to this um, talk. Yeah, no, really good. Any other questions for Winnery? Uh, could you recommend uh, any software or platform that you can use to help with financial planning? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Some of these things are usually, um, if you can hear me, it's fine. Uh, some of these things are usually recommend that you do them manually sometimes. It, it helps because um, if you are, when you have a rough idea of what would be the, the, the finance or whatever you need, the, whatever kind of. Sorry, item. Can oh, they can hear. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of the software, sometimes we might be doing some of these things manually, but I think with an Excel sheet, an Excel sheet might be able to um, help out in terms of financial planning. But I think um, Dr. Mikal should be able to um, um, answer. Yeah. Sure. sure, if I may. Um, I, I do agree with you uh, on the Excel uh, basis, even if it sounds very disappointing, um, but the reason behind is uh, there are some softwares which would allow you to, to kind of linearly progress a growth, etc. However, this is not the complexity, unfortunately, of basically any business. Yeah, because uh, because when when you when you reach a certain growth level, you will need to to employ new people. You 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 cannot employ ten percent and then eleven and then next month thirteen percent of a person. So uh, hence, unless the unless the finance model is not showing the the internal dynamics of of the business it's not really worth uh, much um, so anything manual makes more sense than relying on an automatic software which would uh, which would do a uh, projection into the future based on well some strange assumptions which will not definitely not lead to the proper liquidity, the uh, proper um, uh, liquidity demand, and the, the height of the uh, funding required. It's a, it's it's a bad news. I agree because it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm.